Hi, everyone. I'm Jason Park. I am the head of business development at Pictures Global and the host of our video AMA. Today, we're featuring Public Mint, and our guest is George Pereira. He is the co-founder and CTO of Public Mint. So thank you very much for, for joining us today, George. We're super excited about our partnership with your team, and we'd love to learn more about the, the token through this AMA. Thanks for having me. Great. So for, for our AMAs, we source questions from both the Bridges Global and the crypto communities regarding your listing. So let's dive right in. To, to kick, kick things off, uh, we always like to learn a little bit about our guest and hear your team story. So can you tell our audience about what gave you the idea to create this, this project? Well, the, um, this all started when um, we were faced with uh, the realization of how slow bank transactions are particularly in when you have to do various uh, in sequence. So um, it occurred to me that we could build a system where we would transfer the ownership of funds without actually moving the actual funds there are underneath. Um, so the genesis of it was to build a, a layer of, of uh, moving the ownership of funds above the banking system. Mm -hmm. um, and in, in doing so, to do it in a way that is uh, open for anyone to participate uh, and not as a siloed uh, system, just like, you know, uh, existing fintech solutions in the last 20 years. Got it. Got it. That's very interesting. So um, wh where, are, where are you actually coming from? And was it more of a, um, I guess, a jurisdictional hardship that uh, you were seeing um, in terms right. of the... <laughs> Well, the, my, my, my strongest experience um, in, in the fintech space and in, in, in the crypto space was at Uphold. Um, mm -hmm. Uphold started as a, a service that's in many ways comparable to Coinbase, uh, but as a service that wanted to bring together you know, fiat and crypto um, as a brokerage system, but also build a, a money platform that anyone could use to build their own, their own um, services. Um, the realization after a few years of operation was that the more people you have in a closed system, the more you are um, intersecting compliance requirements. Sure. So in, in trying to do that in a closed system, even essentially there is this single entity that is not just holding funds, but also needs to own licenses in order to operate um, everywhere. So with public mentor we're taking a very different approach. We have this blockchain that connects uh, a number of uh, licensed and financial institutions under the hood. So as to pre present kind of a, a coherent experience for anyone using the service um, without having to care with the, with what's underneath and without having to care, without having to have a single entity that needs to have licenses in the, across the world in order to operate. Mm -hmm. So we are essentially an aggregator for these financial institutions, uh, such as banks and trusts in the U.S. or electronic money institutions in, in Europe um, and in other places. We can we can partner with any of these institutions um, and offer you know, a, an open blockchain that just presents these uh, capabilities to the world without having to actually build this behemoth of a, of a fintech corporation to that would need licenses in all of these places. <laughs> Sure, sure. And um, can you also add to that and tell us a little bit about the background of, of your team? Right. So, um, as I mentioned, I've been I've been doing development for over twenty years. Um, I've launched a few startups, launched a few companies. Uh, was CTO at at a poll for about four years, where you know I grew the team from five people to seventy people, just the engineering team. Um, my other co-founder, the other co-founder at Public Mint is Halsey Miner, who was also a founder at uh, uh, Pult. Um, but he's, you know, he's been in the business for, for decades. He started uh, CNET, he started uh, Salesforce, uh, OpenDNS, uh, service that then later was sold to Google to become Google Voice, a number of really large uh, businesses. And 
after I left the pulse, we, we got together to build this, this, uh, this vision of this project. In addition to that, we have um, uh, Paulo Rodriguez, who was head of uh, the Swift Bureau for, for Portugal. So mm -hmm. he was really well versed in <laughs> banking, banking transactions, bank relationships. Sure. Uh, we have Thomas Brook, who is also legal counsel at uh, Paul, uh, and is now legal counsel at RTM and a number of other uh, startups. Um, we have uh, Diane Grace Smith, who is also CFO at Paul for a while, um, and also been very involved in the in the fintech space for a while. Uh, we have Liz Martinez, who just joined, also uh, from a Paul, is now uh, chief compliance officer. Um, so we did get a number of people after a few years that we have worked together before. Sure. So uh, as to build this, you know, this largest team. And then there's the, the engineering team with many of whom I've been working with for the last uh, 15, five, five to 15 years. So Got it's, it. uh, so it's really seasoned, seasoned veterans uh, within your team, even yes. though you guys are, are a relatively new team. Uh, yeah. So thanks for sharing that. So I guess before we delve into the details of, of the tokens, um, mm -hmm. why the name Public Mint? We'd we'll love to uh, kind of ah, learn the that's story. That's a good one. Yeah. yeah. So um, the closest thing to what we we wanted to build were stable coins at the time. Hmm. This is back in 2017, and it's, they still are to some extent. Um, so it, with with stable coins. Essentially, you have this representation of funds that's being held in some financial institution and it's moving on top of an existing blockchain. Um, <clears throat> but for the, the common person that wants to acquire stable coins, they have to go to an exchange. Mm -hmm. So they're essentially buying money that is being pre minted by someone else. So essentially, there's a business model of people with you know large volumes of liquidity taking it to. Uh, to uh, stablecoin issuers, uh, you know, minting those coins, then going to exchange to sell it, sell them. Um, so that's that's essentially how the process works with stablecoins. Uh, we instead wanted to allow you to mint your own money, so that you can take money from your bank account and put it on on public mint, and it becomes dollars on chain. So then there's the other the other details that you know the dollar is the native currency of the of the public mint blockchain. So you don't need a secondary currency like like Ethereum or or any any you know any network token in order to be able to transfer funds. Uh, but the, the name public mint does really comes from that perspective that there doesn't need to be a, a global mint like in the US Treasury for dollars or any of these stablecoin issuers, and you can become uh, the minter of your own dollars on chain, which is a uh, hundred percent fully collateral collateralized by actual fiat money. Yes. Right. And that's how you can, you know, it is because you bring those funds in. Right. Exactly. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> that's interesting. So, um, I guess looking forward a little bit, um, can you talk us through, um, your team's roadmap for, for the future? What do some of these upcoming milestones look like for maybe, the next upcoming year, and then if you can also share your long-term vision, um, so your goals for the next five to ten years. Right. So, um, in the short term, we're we we have just launched, you know, Earn. We have just launched our mobile app. Uh, in the very short term, we want to improve that so that the the experience is increasingly polished and so that it doesn't come across as a, an app for that only crypto people can use. Sure. Right. So we've taken a few steps in that direction, like the ability to just quick log in, quickly log in with your uh, Google or Apple account and your private key gets stored, encrypted in your cloud account. So it's, it's very hard to lose. It's still secure because it's encrypted, but it's very hard to lose, which covers one of the, one of the main issues with people opening a crypto account, which is, you know, we're our worst own enemies. It's far yeah. more easy for you to lose your key, for the average person to lose their key than someone to go and steal it. Sure. So we we're, we are, the next few months are going to be, uh, you know, if this was, if you're into gaming, this would be quality of life improvement, right? Mm -hmm. Improvements to the app, how it flows, how easy it is to do things. Uh, we have um, uh, an in-app uh, 
light dashboard for you to see the progress of your earnings. So, so many of those things. Then <clears throat> um, immediately after we are looking to expand ways to onboard funds onto the, onto the platform. So additional ways to bring in uh, dollars. Uh, we want to add additional uh, fiat currencies, uh, including you know, euro, pounds, and a number of other ones, so that we can take the next step, which is to offer on-chain forex. Right. Mm -hmm. So you're you're literally trading uh, euros with dollars with with other people with uh, an intermediary adding a markup and a spread. Sure. Um, that also allows for people to uh, with that use different currencies to bring in and participate in the earn process. Uh, it more easily um, and over time we what we're really wanting to build is kind of a, a new finance public financial money system right mm -hmm. something that uh, exists on top of the banking system but it's open for anyone to participate um, so oh, along the way that includes uh, third parties coming in and building their own apps on top of the of this open blockchain uh, but also for us to do that ourselves and also build our own apps and bring in additional features like the ability to, to request loans, to, sorry, to lend, to borrow, um, and other other kinds of um, financial activities that you, you want to perform, you'd be able to perform them on, on this platform. Uh, not necessarily with us building all of those features, but with, with Public Mint, the, the application development arm, you know, participating alongside in the ecosystem by, by building additional features. Got it. So you guys would, you know, really want to be a, a ecosystem play for the crypto yes. industry as a whole. Got it. Yes. Um, the crypto, well, let me uh, zero in on that. Yeah. We want to make sure that people have the ability to use uh, fiat just like they would use crypto, right? So mm -hmm. uh, with, with self-sovereignty, with the ability to transfer it without intermediaries, the ability to participate in any on-chain opportunities uh, and do that for the general audience uh, without the need uh, to learn a lot about crypto. So right. for instance, our, our earn program is essentially a, a DeFi play, but if, you, if you're if you not very much into crypto and you open the app and you can go through it without learning anything about the crypto space and without learning anything about this, you know, other various kinds of currencies, so you still get the advantages of, of DeFi and crypto, but with the money you use every day, which is fiat. Yeah, and so I think it's sense. a good segue. And then and if you can kind of get into more detail about the the Earn uh, platform as itself, um, how 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 it actually works from a I guess a user and a UI perspective, and um, the benefits for for the customer for using that. Right. So the 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 Earn program started off. We're as a way to a, a big part of it is a way to de-risk uh, participating in high yield protocols. So uh, when you when you put money into earn, uh, it essentially gets distributed to a series of C5 partners and DeFi protocols, so that you don't have essentially all all eggs in the same basket, right? Sure. And you get an aggregate yield across all of those participants, all of those partners. Um, and putting money into it is, is very simple. So it, first first off, uh, you put money into uh, the public blockchain. So we have what we call you know bank to chain and, and chain to bank functionality. So you use the app to the, the you know the cheapest ways for instance to send a wire transfer, mm -hmm. um, and those funds get represented on your wallet. Then from to go from there to actually participating in the earn process is just you know a single click. We mm -hmm. earn, shoot how much you want to apply, click OK, and you're done, right? Under the hood, that actually moves funds from your moves your funds from uh, your your account. You're actually signing a transaction that sends those dollars to the earn smart contract. You get another token in return, which is USD plus, which is the interest bearing, um, the yield bearing um, uh, asset. And at any point in time, you can convert those USD plus back to dollars, so that sure. you can then withdraw them out of the network. Um, and as long as you are holding USD Plus, every time a partner does a, a, a yield payment, it gets distributed throughout all the all the owners of USD Plus. And I'm assuming the users um, have access to a dashboard where they can see in real time how much um, you know earned they actually incurred um, through that right. dashboard. Right. 
Yeah, so right now they have they have access to kind of the total of, of dollars that they have and they can see the transactions with the payments coming in. But yep. that's actually one of the improvements we want to make to the app, which is to make it a little bit more uh, obvious how much you're earning. Sure. Uh, the main difference from being as, as you know, as, as, as you can imagine, this is kind of an, an ag- becoming an aggregator for these various yield protocols. Mm-hmm. Um, and the, the tricky thing is that the, the conditions of those protocols can change over time. Uh, so it's hard to, we can't really offer uh, like a, a fixed APY. What we can do is like look back into the past and see how much they're being offering and, and show you the, the average APY over a period of time. Uh, which is why when we launched, because there's no such historial, um, we didn't we didn't uh, prioritize building out that dashboard. Uh, so that's really something that needs to come out in the next couple of, of, of months. Got it. Got it. Understood. Let's uh, let's talk about um, the choice of, of blockchain. Why, why did and this is actually a question from uh, one of our committee members. Um, so why why did Public Mint choose Hyperledger, and what are some of the major uh, benefits of, of this blockchain, especially for someone um, who isn't too familiar with Hyperledger, if you can explain that. Right. So the, the interesting thing is that Hyperledger is, is not a blockchain in itself. It's a family of solutions. Um, the the most famous or, or the, the early ones was Hyperledger Fabric, which is yep. probably what a lot of people think about when you think in terms of Hyperledger. Uh, we're actually using a solution called Hyperledger Bezu. Uh, it started off as a project from uh, Consensus, a uh, Consensus-sponsored company called Pegasus. Uh, and they built this software called uh, Pantheon, where it was essentially uh, an implementation of the Ethereum protocol, but in a more modular fashion and allowing for uh, you know uh, a, a few um, consensus mechanisms, particularly uh, BPF 2.0, uh, Istanbul BPF 2.0, which allows for you know faster consensus that can only be used in in um, in a smaller in networks with fewer nodes, right? Um, so the 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 first version of our of our of our blockchain actually used uh, Geth, so one of the typical uh, Ethereum clients out there, uh, but it was pretty hard to evolve, and we wanted to make significant changes. Uh, in a way that didn't imply that every time there was a new version, we would have to do you know, a big amount of work to 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 make those things compatible. Right. So in in that solution in, in Pantheon, we found uh, you know a piece of software that was written in a very modular way and that really uh, allowed us to to do this, which is to continue implementing our own changes, just like for instance the you know uh, making. The, the 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 core currency, uh, the native currency of the blockchain, to be uh, the dollar. But at the mm-hmm. same time, it's also a smart contract, so you, you can interact with it in, in either as an ERC twenty token or as a native currency. Mm-hmm. So those those changes, uh, we we can con- make them and then continue to integrate the, the developments in the Ethereum protocol without having uh, you know uh, such, such such a big volume of work because the project is very modular and it's, it's built for the purposes of being expanded on. Uh, and that's why we chose what, you know, a year and a half after we started became Hyperledger Basic, but it wasn't Hyperledger when we started. I see. Got it. Thanks for sharing that. Um, and now let's talk about the, the token itself. So um, what are the use cases, uh, the tokenomics, um, and as a follow-up to that, are there any governance rights uh, included in, in the token ownership? Right. So the, the main thing that that I think sets the mint token apart from from other tokens in, in the crypto space is that it generates uh, revenue for people that own the token and participate in the staking process in the governance process uh, because out of the yield that is generated from the total value locked in the platform a portion of it is set aside to compensate people that participate in the governance process. Hmm. Um, now we have a timeline of over two years in order f- to build out that governance process because we need to achieve some mass and, and, and you know uh, pass on some of those decisioning rights. But as an example, um, imagine that right now we have uh, as partners uh, Celsius, Abra, Compound, um, and an insurance partner, and 
the, those funds are distributed, let's say, 30% each and then 10% to the insurance partner. Right now, we are the only ones that can add a new protocol or allocate funds differently. Um, mm -hmm. The goal is for the, all of those things to happen through the voting of uh, the, the main stakeholders. Okay. Now, those people who vote, um, let's say that over a period of time, there's a certain number of votes. Those people that participate in the vote, the yield that gets generated in the period where they have those their own tokens staked for voting, uh, a portion of it gets distributed to the stakeholders. So um, the more value there is in the platform, the more people have their own funds uh, in, in earn, the more the same amount of token holders uh, uh, receives as, as uh, compensation for the work they do in the staking process. <clears throat> Got it. Understood. That, that's the primary use case. That's how it was designed. Uh, we're also in the process of launching um, a loyalty program, which is kind of a recognition that not everyone that is interested in in the Mint system and that wants to participate is actually you know uh, willing or interested to spend the time to participate in the governance process. So we're building out a, a loyalty system that is going to be uh, discussed and, and made public um within the next couple of weeks um which will also help uh which will also allow people that want to participate in the ecosystem and hold the mean token to take some advantage out of that uh mm. even if they are not directly uh staking for governance purposes so it's also going to hold the characteristics of a a platform or an exchange token type is that what you're kind of alluding to very much very much yeah uh, yeah. Something comparable is, for instance, the Nexo token that gives you certain rights in terms of rights and discounts or, or the CRX token. Um, mm -hmm. So it, it also is going to adopt some of those uh, approaches to, to providing the token with more functionality in addition to its core purpose, which is for governance. Uh, for governance. Sure, sure. And um, I think as a follow-up as well, when, when kind of looking at the future of the min token um will this ever migrate entirely to the public min chain and and when it does what's going to happen to the erc20 token well um right now you can already move the token back and forth so i have I've always believed in it particularly increasingly in being multi-chain mm -hmm. so there's there's no benefit for anyone to to artificially force a token that is already a multi-chain to, to, to move it to single chain. Now, there are, there, there are advantages in having the token in, in, our, in, in the public mint blockchain. So for instance, uh, you, you can transfer a token for a few cents on the dollar, right? It's, it's very cheap to transfer. Mm -hmm. um, we have a, a, a developer in the ecosystem that is on the process of launching a DEX where you can make trades it's very similar to Uniswap, where you can make trades between the mint and the dollar token uh, for less than five cents. So there are benefits to having the token there. Uh, but we also, I also recognize that you know, if you want to participate in the larger uh, ecosystem, uh, it's beneficial to have it also on the Ethereum network and potentially on other networks. So um, I don't imagine there there isn't a specific plan to force the token to become. Uh, to exist solely on a single blockchain. Got it. Got it. That that makes sense, and I hundred percent agree. Um, you know, the future of this industry is probably dependent on the interoperability of a lot of these these projects. So I think that's hundred percent accurate. Very much. Yeah. Um, the the different topic that I wanted to delve into is um, you know, Bitrix Global as a company. Um, and as an exchange, we're very much focused on security aspect of things. Mm -hmm. And by listing you guys, um, you know, obviously we've done our due diligence on, on your team, on, on the token. Uh, but what are some of the steps that your team has taken to protect its users? Have you gone through any, you know, third party audits? Um, and if not, <coughs> to, 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 to do so. Right. So the, the token itself has been um, audited. Um, in terms of the development of the software, well, I, I come from a, from a background of essentially doing things in a, in a security first manner. Sure. So we 
before we had a, a single line of code written, uh, we had an information security plan. Uh, we had a business continuity plan. We had ITDR. So all of these things that, that for instance, make sure that no one that, that has access to our production environment also has access to our development environment. I, I normally say uh, that unlike past projects, I personally don't have access to either. I, I don't have access to the development environment. I don't have access to production. Uh, I have access to the team and what they're discussing, but there is a, it starts with having this uh, division of responsibilities. So segregation of responsibilities. Sure. It follows with, for instance, um, and the people there, developers, you know, listening to this will probably recognize this as, as the, the, you know, the Git workflow, where if you're, if you're making a, a commit to, to code, you cannot approve it yourself. Someone else has to come in and look at your code and approve it. So right. there's a number of things that are, in terms of how we build things and how we build things in the past, you know, ten years that are, that have been brought into this. Another example is all of our our, our backend code has one hundred percent coverage with you know testing done, uh, you know, both integration and functional and unit testing. Mm -hmm. um, so all of those things add up to uh, to being able to build something that is secure because there is no amount of of auditing that that would be able to keep up with the pace of development, you'd be constantly, you know, you'd, it, it'd be like banks where you have a new version and then it needs to take like three months in order to be deployed into production. Yeah. So um, we, we do, you know, penetration testing, we do security testing, but in a continuous manner, there's not this, you know, grand moment of auditing. We did that for, for the, for the mint token itself. Uh, but for the rest, it's more a matter of process rather than uh, one-time auditing. Sure, and, and you know that's very reassuring to to hear. Um, just given um, there's so many projects out there um, with a lot of security deficiencies, as we've recently witnessed in the exchange. So it's very reassuring to to hear that. Um, and I think you've kind of alluded to. Um, the USD plus um, earlier, but are we going to see USD plus being used in other dApps like, you know, liquidity providers in a DEX or, you know, some of these lending and, and borrowing protocols? Right. So that's an interesting thing is that once you have a USD plus, uh, if I need to pay you, let's say I want to pay you a hundred bucks, I can just send you a hundred USD plus and the next day you're earning on that. Mm -hmm. right? I don't have to exit the, uh, the earn in order to be able to use those dollars for, for something else. So, I mean, we we do have the, the intention to uh, suggest that and to make some use of that ourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, but we are seeing, for instance, that the in the DEX that is getting uh, launched soon, uh, we're having a conversation now, for instance, to start up with and offer some liquidity, both in dollars, but also in USD plus. Mm -hmm. So that if you're, if you have, you know, USD plus and you're in a trade mint or vice versa, you can already do it. Sure. Um, and it's interesting because going into USD Plus is is very, is it, pretty cheap. Is the cost of a, of, a, of a tiny transaction, just a few cents. Exiting USD Plus has a tiny cost, it's like $1 mm -hmm. to exit the back from USD Plus into USD. Uh, but the fact that you can remain in USD Plus and you can trade in USD Plus and, and engage with other products, uh, it means that you can actually build a payment system where um, the dollars that are being moved around are constantly earning without you, you having to, to do that specifically. Now, we have, you know, uh, in, in the brainstorming process, we, we thought, hey, maybe one day we could turn things around and the default dollar of the, of the blockchain would be USD+. Mm. Uh, but there's, also, there's always a, a small risk uh, to that because dollars on our platform are sitting in you know fdic insured uh institutions banks and, okay. and uh but usd plus is sitting at yield partners so uh, USD, usd is yeah. in custodial partners uh, usd plus is in yield partners some of it can be in a in a protocol on another blockchain so there's right. always a little bit of risk on that um so it should be a conscious choice of people to to have those dollars uh like that now, obviously, it's far less risky to hold USD Plus because it's being distributed to a number of, of, of yield protocols. So you're not exposed to a single one, mm -hmm. um, but there's still some risk in right. that. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's that's very helpful. Um, another question, and this is um, another one from our community. Uh, looking forward, are there any potential partnerships or collaborations on the horizon for, for your team? Um, and uh, follow up to that, what does this partnership with British Global? So I think it's specifically asking for kind of your listing strategy um, in a way um, uh, for, for the project. Right. So um, in terms of partnerships, yes. Now, what, one of the things that, that um, I, I pointed out earlier on is that we are more focused on creating partnerships with, with institutions that bring in uh, additional functionality and capability to our platform mm. more than we are of actually building those core capabilities ourselves. So there's always this, this effort in building the UI and the user experience and packaging that. But for sure, you know, one of the things that you can expect in, in the second quarter and going forward is uh, additional partnerships. Mm. Um, in terms of uh, Bittrex, it just start, started. Um, the, the token, our token right now doesn't have a lot of volume. Um, we, are, we are considering launching uh, another, um, another pair that also connects with Ethereum or Bitcoin, which we're currently deciding. Um, that's because when you're trading, a, and I've seen this on a number of other tokens, when you're trading against a flat currency, you don't see a lot of activity there. Uh, adding another trading pair uh, should help us uh, get to that. Uh, but in the future, we see also that, you know, just like uh, partner with uh, uh, electronic money institutions in, in Europe can give us access to euros and, and other currencies, like particular other trading currencies, having a connectivity and that having a partnership with uh, an exchange like Bitrix um, can really help us bridge the other assets and other crypto assets such that you can literally use uh, dollars in our platform to access those 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 funds uh one of the things that we have discussed with bitrex but it's it's in the longer term calendar is for bitrex to actually connect to our own blockchain mm -hmm. which means that you could have dollars on your on your wallet and in five seconds you can have those dollars at the at the bitrex exchange right, right. so yep. obviously that requires development on the part of the exchange so the, it, it sends to, to reason that we'll start with the ERC20 token, but it has been discussed and it's part of the plan to at some point uh, allow for that, which will, would allow for uh, much faster movement of funds between your Bitrix accounts and dollars on, on public mint. So all of those things are, are things that are uh, potentials, but obviously you can do everything at the same time. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> also, it, it, this, this is also, this also needs to make sense uh for bitrix as a company to to also build so we're looking to see as volume grows there'll be increased interest in in building this at least that's the conversation we've had so far with your development team yeah absolutely Def definitely stay tuned um so i think i'm already up to my final question but is there anything else that i haven't asked you that that you wanted to touch upon uh for the same um i see off the top of my head I think if you if that's a number of, of good questions, that's on the usefulness of the mint token, dollars on our platform. Um, the I, I had a chance to talk about our loyalty program. Part of our goal in the next few months is very literally to grow the awareness on the project. So most of our fo focus right now is in in marketing. Not in when it's, when it's say marketing, I mean the entire scope of what a marketing plan is, right? Uh, not just you know paid ads as many people think, right. <laughs> but also in terms of continue to produce content, continue to raise awareness, create a loyalty program so that people understand the advantage of bringing in and they can invite other people to join, so mm -hmm. that we can grow our community beyond our our core supporters, uh, which has have been immensely helpful in so far. Um, so I guess the the number one thing that I would that I would invite, like to invite your your viewers to, to do is. You know, join us on Telegram, uh, follow us on, on, on Twitter and, and Medium, uh, continue looking at what we're doing, and don't be afraid to try it out. You know, uh, join, download the app, uh, bring in some funds, put your funds to earn, and that will be immensely helpful in helping our, our community grow. Um, and hopefully we can continue to move forward to with your support to actually build out this new public uh, financial system on top of the existing one. 
Yeah, absolutely. And and you actually answered my my last question, um, which was <laughs> what's the best way for the community to get involved <clears throat> in the project. Um, and I think you made a great point is really it just um, starts from trying it out, um, even if it's, you know, very small amounts. That's how you kind of educate yourself, yeah. and get Absolutely. accustomed to, to the platform, and you get exposure to, to the industry. So I think that's a great point. Um, and I definitely think our community members will will try you guys out um, and hopefully you guys can create consistent content and, and you know, yeah, uh, a, on, a on that note. See of that content as well. Yeah. Yeah. On the on that note, uh, one of the things that we're we're working towards is to add. Right now, you can bring in funds to a variety of, of fiat matters. Mm -hmm. For the crypto community, uh, a lot of people have already have their funds uh, in digital form. So right now, we're supporting right. you support USDC through the Ethereum network. But in the short term, we're looking to support USDC and other networks as well, so that the act of bringing funds in yep. is actually a lot cheaper than it is uh, just through the Ethereum network. Um, that's still, you know, a couple of months away, but it's all of that is part of our part of our plan to facilitate bringing in funds in, trying it out, and and seeing how it is to have funds on Earth. Absolutely, thanks for thanks for sharing that. Uh, well, thank you, George, for joining us uh, for for this AMA today. Uh, we definitely learned a lot about the public mint and, and the mint token. Um, we're super excited about the partnership and for the future of, of Public Mint. So if our viewers want to learn more about Public Mint, please go to www.publicmint.com. That's P-U-B-L-I-C-M-I-N-T dot, uh, dot com. So mm -hmm. thank you again, George. Thanks for your time. Appreciate Thanks, it. Jason. Take care. Right. Take care. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye.